All right. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. I think it's yeah, can it's up. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi everyone. All right. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, so it will be mostly on the golden image um portion, right? For how we can do it in an open-ended way using Ansible, right? Um, uh, maybe before I start, any any questions or comments from anyone or anything that you or may you may want to. Um, right. Thanks, Ravi. That you you may want us to um talk about, or that uh you know we just go direct into the topic. Okay, uh, I think today's uh, meetup will be mainly on this uh, golden image creation. It wouldn't be, um you know um too long. Probably we will have a look at uh, what we did for um you know what one of the showcase to our customers um when it comes to this golden image creation. But before that, maybe let's just uh, look at. Uh, what is a golden image right so it really is a pre-configured uh, os template in a way right usually you know you have things like windows or linux uh, kind of os we want to be able to have the latest security patches and updates to the image and of course to have the configurations that is specific um, to your environment as well and harden it according to the requirements uh, based on the needs uh, of the customers or of yourself Right. And obviously, the benefits of uh, using a golden image itself, you can help to reduce the uh, deployment time, right? Obviously, to be able to, uh, you know, for instance, if you have a VMware template, like in our case, it's going to be very easy to deploy. And uh, you will not have this uh, potential human errors because it's all done in an automated fashion. And of course, uh, it will also then allow you to be uh, very consistent um, when it comes to this uh, deployment itself. So this is an open-ended approach uh, by us on how it can be done. Of course, I think in the market today, um, some of you guys may be familiar with tools like Packer, right, which can also be used to build uh, images for virtual machines and to be used in deployment. So over here, we're just uh, trying to see how you know uh, we can actually use uh, Ansible, for instance, in a GitOps uh, fashion to go and do similar things when it comes to building the image um, itself, right? Uh, and to kind of achieve uh, similar end results as what one may do with uh, Packer today, right? So um, the demo today will really be focused more on the VMware uh, platform with the Windows uh, server, but it really doesn't, you know, limit us to all this, uh, for instance, VMware platform, etc. right? We, we can always uh, use it for other kind of platforms and other servers or images. Um, in a very similar fashion, right? So uh, what happens over here is that uh, we will have the codes that's needed or rather the playbooks and some of those relevant information, right? To be inside the, the Git repository. So what you will see later on is that we will be doing an integration between the uh, Git repo, right? Uh, from a, a Git perspective, right? Um, the SEM to uh, Ansible, right? And whenever there is a changes, uh, detected and there's a push um, to the uh, code repo, it will trigger off the um, build itself. Right, So you can see over here that the pipeline will allow an easy rebuild of the base OS image. Uh, we will be able to harden uh, the image and to update with the latest security patches uh, as well Right, whenever we trigger this uh, new build um, or that we manually trigger the pipeline depending on how we want to do it. And this will then mean that um, you know developers will be able to just test everything on the properly hardened uh, base image, as opposed to having to. I think one of those questions, oh, sorry, one of those problems, right, that uh, sometimes uh, is faced is that different people are using different versions of the OS uh, image when they do um, testing, and that some of those things may have been there for a while, which means that it may not be hardened properly, or, or that. Um, you know, maybe the um, patches, it's, patches itself may not be updated and hence uh, there may be some CVEs uh, that is there, right? What we are looking for is how we can always ensure that uh, there is a way to make sure everyone is able to um, just use the common base image for doing software testing and hence uh, things are going to be more consistent and you will be able to say that this is going to work in production as well, 
right so of course the pipeline itself we can easily extend it to include application installation and other uh, custom requirements i mean of course there's different ways of uh, doing this right so i think one of those things that uh, which is the other approach it's more around building um, and then installing the applications and the rest of the things uh, on the image right uh, after the vm is up so that is something that's more common uh, that, that we may be seeing uh, today as well, right? Which, which is more around, okay, I spin up the virtual machine and then I'll install a bunch of things on it. Uh, after that, um, you know, like your agents for, um, let's say, antivirus, or it could be for um, storage and all those things, as opposed to start installing all those things inside the image uh, before we start. So really, the, there isn't a, um, you know, rule to say that you must do it this way or the other way. Right. We are just trying to show one of those uh, possible ways in which we can do this, and that um, you know if this doesn't really uh, fit or suit the um, scenario that you're in, then uh, what can happen is that you can do the uh, post configurations and installation outside of the pipeline as well. As what uh, some of the customers are uh, telling us that they will prefer um, to do um, today. Right. So. Ultimately, right, what, what's happening on is then with this thing, we can rebuild very quickly and it will lead to a much faster reaction time uh, when it comes to new CVEs and security vulnerabilities, right? Because we can just make use of the GitOps uh, approach to just uh, rebuild the whole thing again uh, using pipelines. So this is how that uh, whole pipeline can look like, right? So we have a GitLab as our source code management uh, repository um, and we will be able to just use it to just um, trigger off a webhook towards the um, Ansible uh, automation platform workflow itself to perform things like pulling codes, right? Creating the ISOs that contain the auto unattended XML, right? PowerShell scripts and other files. Essentially, we are trying to pull out things that will, or rather generate, right? Using um, J2 template, for instance. Uh, to go and be able to install the um, the the OS itself, right? And then after which we have a new uh, Windows uh, base server, and we just install using the um, answer file, right? So it will perform unattended install automatically. And after which we will update the inventory. We, we will, I mean, in this simple example, what we are doing is we are kind of assuming that it's going to be a fixed uh, IP, and um, we will just use the IP to log in, and and after which um, we will then uh, perform the relevant hardening update and perform things like installing the tools, right? Like VMware, it can be antivirus, storage, or monitoring agents, depending on how you want to do it, right? And then all these things will then be inside the um, base image itself, and we will then convert the image to um, a golden uh, image. Right? We are giving it just a, a IP because we will not be having this VM for long, right? The VM is there only during the period of uh, installation and uh, making sure that it is fully updated with all the required information. Right? So we will also have the rollback process, right? If anything goes wrong, we'll just, you know, um, roll back uh, the, the whole build itself, just destroy the VM and the start from scratch. Right? So any, any questions on how this uh, flow looks like? Okay. So let's just go on to the image building piece so i do have a recorded uh sorry i put the wrong screen it's here all right so you can see over here that uh, we do have a recorded demo right on this i'm going to Um, when you say task kitchen, uh, what will that mean? Uh, Ravi? Oh. No, no, no. Uh, this this is purely Ansible, right? So uh, we we did not uh, use other tools. So we can actually, I mean, I can walk you through the whole process. Uh, so it's it's really all done using uh, Ansible. Um, we we did not actually use um, other tools uh, for this. So it's like.
what we were saying earlier, it's an open-ended approach, right? So um, you can, of course, use other tools uh, for, for this process as well. It's just that we wanted to show that this is also a possibility, right? If you just use uh, everything using Ansible, it can also be done. Um, I mean, this comes as some of the requests uh, from customers, right? Where they want to collapse everything into one tool. So we were just exploring options on how if we include um, this portion as well as part of the Ansible automation, how it can be achieved. And that's how this idea came about. All right, let me just uh, roll, go quickly through this uh, front piece, right? So then let me just off this. So it's actually, so this particular environment that we have, right? We have a uh, web server, right? That house all, all the different uh, ISO itself. You can see over here that uh, we have the, um, a Windows Server ISO that has been created, the unattended ISO as well. Um, those are the directories that's inside the um, web server. If you click on it, you can see that 2012, 16, 19, right? Of course, today we have 22, right? Windows Server 22 version as well, but back then was uh, 2019, um, a few months ago. This is the ISO that we have that we use to um, set up the uh, Windows Server, right? When it comes to the um, unattended ISO itself, right, we just fast forward a bit. We also have the other ISOs from the previous um, build, right? So we are just uh, having all these different um, ISOs that has been created. We also have a VMware tools, right, for us to keep track of the different uh, packages that we can install. But right? over here, we are just trying to ensure that the VMware tools are being installed on the image when the VM um, comes up so that we can make use of the uh, features that is available uh, after that. We kind of need that in order to do, um, you know, WinRM into the uh, target. So if you look at the webhook settings, this is from GitLab itself. Uh, where we are pointing towards uh, is really to the, um, Ansible uh, platform itself, right? So you can see over here, for instance, that the Ansible platform, right, is located um, over here. And this is the pipeline that uh, we're actually using uh, for the template um, that will be triggered. And the webhook URL is this, which is the same as what we have actually configured uh, inside uh, GitLab. So we also have to specify the secret token, right? So this is kind of how we are doing it uh, with the GitLab integration with Ansible. And there is going to be a new trigger whenever there's a merge request uh, event. So over here, we can see that this is the unattended uh, install YAML. We will be passing in information that's needed uh, for this installation, right? If you look at it, uh, we have things like um, the hardening requirements, uh, the Windows update category, etc. Right, so those are all information that will be um, needed in order for us to be able to do the uh, ISO build. Right, so we have a build directory, the default size that we are setting for the um, VM that we are building. Right, uh, we can always change all this information accordingly. So those are things that we specify um, within the actual um, configurations itself so that we are able to um, do the deployment, right? So the VMware cluster information, for instance, we kind of uh, set all this uh, information in as well on where that uh, VMware cluster that we are building the test, uh, the, the, the test uh, VM for building the image uh, is, right? And we kind of specify things on the base VM uh, information and where the tools are located. So really looking at all these things, we can have a hardening requirements uh, for instance, for password account settings and all those things, or that we can actually use it based on the custom standards that uh, the customer or yourself has, right? You can definitely use things like CIS, hardening, you know, PCI DSS, NIST, doesn't really matter, right? Different kind of uh, standards can be done. If you go into the Windows hardening uh, requirements itself, you can see that, um, you know, like this password section, right, that we are talking about, um, will be something like what we saw earlier, right? Then after which we have this account lockout uh, session and then we have the audit session. So those are things that when you further drill down, you can see over here that these are uh, what is going on uh, over here, right? So history size, uh, 
password complexities and things like uh, that. So those things will be used to harden the um, Windows VM itself. And this can be fully customized or it can be um, based on, let's say, the CIS standards and you update uh, accordingly. Same thing goes for things like registry fix and auditing. Right? So those are just some of the sections that we typically see in a customer premise. Um, it's not exhaustive. It's just to show the concept uh, for now. Right. So then the update categories, we know that there are many different categories when it comes to um, the Windows uh, update uh, process itself. Uh, you have things like critical updates, um, you know, the definition updates, the, uh, the security updates, uh, update rule out, uh, et cetera. Right. So those are things that uh, can be done. So if you look at this thing around the um, XML file that we are creating, so this is really what's needed in order to do an unattended installation of the Windows uh, server itself. So we are leveraging on a uh, Ginger2 template uh, in this case to pass in information. Right? So you can see over here, for instance, that this really is picking up the information that we have defined within the YAML file, and we use it to uh, generate this uh, XML uh, itself so that we can use it for the uh, Windows Server um, build uh, whenever we run a new pipeline. So all these informations are something that we can define within the YAML. It is uh, whereby we will be able to send in the information. So then over here, you can see that we are enabling things like WinRM, and then we are setting up uh, a default IP address and DNS information where we use during the build process. So this is just an assumption that we will have a fixed IP that we can, it's like a free IP that's available for that particular subnet whereby we always use it just for testing and uh, for building um, the um, uh, golden image itself, right? So all these things will then be uh, generated. We will be passing these files uh, as well. So this some of this information like PowerShell scripts will be inside the second small ISO image that we are mounting on top of the Windows server when we actually do the actual uh, setup and um, installation process. Right, so you can see over here that these are all the tasks that's going to be executed in sequence for this thing to work uh, properly. And of course, I pass in some default uh, password uh, information as well uh, for the uh, administrator so that we can we can log in using WinRM. Right, so some of these things are just uh, what was uh, set up. We can, of course, customize this further right, to set up more in, uh, configurations that you may want to set uh, for the uh, unattended installation. Right. Then the other things, this, this is just a PowerShell script that, uh, again, we have uh, set up. Right? We are running PowerShell commands, and what values we are passing in, those things are going to come from the YAML file definitions that we have actually uh, set out. So then this is the WinRM uh, PowerShell script for setting up and enabling WinRM, which Ansible uses for remote PowerShell scripting in order to set uh, all the uh, access and able for us to be uh, connecting to the Windows uh, server and perform the remaining um, task, right? So those are those are some of the things that uh, you will see uh, within um, this uh, repo itself, and um, it will help you to be able to uh, perform the installation in unattended fashion. So this is uh, Visual Studio um, code itself, right? Uh, so what we are doing over here is that we are trying to create a new branch, right, for us to start the new build. Uh, over here. So we have connected um, this, uh, you know, to the Git repository that we have and that uh, we created a new branch for December 2021 uh, in this case. Um, and we do some changes, right? So from November, we change to December. Um, we want to do a new build. Let's say I want to make some changes to the CPU. I want to make some changes here and there uh, according to the needs. I change it to 16 GB RAM instead of 8 GB of uh, RAM being given to the Windows uh, VM, right? So uh, when I'm happy, I just uh, save it. And and then, you know, we can do a git commit and a git push um, towards um, the repository itself as well, right? So we're just saying that this is a new build uh, for December 2021. And then uh, we're just syncing the changes. So when this is done, because of the uh, webhook uh, integration that we already have, right, you can see that um, it actually triggers off a build, right? So of course, over here, you can see that uh, we will need to create a new merge request um, so that this whole build uh, will, will then start off, right? So 
uh, that is a criteria for triggering that uh, web hook. So we are saying that this is a new build for 2021 for Windows Server 2019. And once the merge request is uh, built, uh, approved, right? So then this whole thing triggers off a uh, new build uh, within the platform. I mean, it's a uh, timeout, right? So let's just go in again. So then uh, this itself um, will start off the whole pipe um, and the workflow, right? So within the workflow itself, we are pulling out different uh, things, right, for the whole environment, right? The second one is to create the ISO. The first one is to get requirements. Um, and um, of course, we will start off um, with all this uh, information needed before it actually goes on to build the actual um, ISO itself, right? So then over here, this is just installing the ISO. Um, and um, over here, you will see that this is my vCenter, right? Um, we have a base image from the other time. So it's really downloading the ISO um, to the Windows, uh, to the VMware data store. So if you look at the data store itself, uh, you will see that as we're starting to put into the data store so that we can use the image in the data store to start the whole uh, deployment uh, itself. So these things are really going to be uh, done, right? I mean, I've recorded this because the whole process will take a long, will take a rather long time, right? Because we have downloading, uploading, installing, and all those things and hardening. That's why this thing has been kind of fast forward a bit so that we can see the whole process uh, without having to wait for too long. So the whole VM itself is then being created. In this case, you can see that from ISO, it boots up. It does a auto installation of the operating system based on the PowerShell scripts um, and the other information that we sent in for the unattended uh, installation XML file. So those things will then help us to set up the uh, Windows machine, right? So after which the installation is done, it will do a reboot uh, as well. So this whole process is actually being controlled uh, using the Ansible uh, workflow, right? So it does a reboot and then um, we'll set up the default um, users and the other information, right, as part of the whole build uh, process and installation process. So when it comes up, right, you can see over here that this is also um, part of the unattended installation process where we were able to achieve because we created all the information that's needed and the config that's needed. So it does an installation of the VMware tools, for instance, in this case. Um, and then after which it will also help to set up, um, you know, things like the um, WinRM, right, that, that we need and uh, setting up the IP address, setting up the uh, DNS information, right? So those things are all being triggered, right, from a automation perspective, right? So once it is all done, right, you can see that over here, it has the um, VMware tools. It gets its own um, IP address, right? So everything is nice. So it continues to run the whole pipe, um, I mean, the whole workflow itself, right? So you can see that the next thing that we do is we kind of just define the VM inside the Ansible inventory so that we are able to connect to it via WinRM. And the next thing that it does is that, uh, of course, the first thing we do, we check, right? Whether it is able to connect. If not, then I'm gonna fail the, uh, the deployment uh, itself, right? So once it's able to connect, we will retrieve the hardening requirements that is needed to harden the uh, base image. So over here, we will do things like enforcing password history, which was what we saw earlier with the YAML file definition. So it does a bunch of things like setting up the minimum uh, password length uh, and other information. We enforce complex password, uh, etc. cetera, um, account locking, right? Lockout, um, all those information that's kind of needed. So this process can go on for a while depending on how many um, hardening policies and rules you have in order to make it work for your uh, base image. So you can see I kind of fast forward the whole thing as well, but the thing is blinking very fast. Then over here, right? This really will then come to a point where we just dump the current uh, configurations, right? For this uh, particular base image that we are going to use, it corresponds right to the 
information that we have actually specified within the YAML file itself, right? So it's very consistent in what you expect um, when, when it comes to this kind of uh, setup um, itself. So once the hardening right, is, is actually done, the next thing that we do really is to do the um, server update. So here we are using the uh, win update module to be able to do the uh, Windows uh, server uh, update. So you can see over here that um, we are getting it to just do the update and Ansible is going to take care of the downloading process and of course the um, restart as well, right? So whenever there's a reboot needed in order for it to be fully updated, all these things will be managed uh, via the Ansible automation itself. So you can see that it goes through quite a fair bit of time in order to you know get everything done. Uh, so then we just make sure that the system goes on, we, we will let all these things uh, be done. And you can see that it does a reboot of the server uh, as it reaches a certain point in time where it deems that a restart is needed. Right? So again, all these things fully automated, everything is actually handled uh, by Ansible uh, via that single workflow that we saw earlier on. So right now this process, it goes into a reboot, it comes back. So again, I fast forward because it takes a while, right? So then after which um, it's validating the reboot, it does a round two of the um, win update itself, right? So we do have the intelligence uh, within the uh, win update um, module itself to perform this. So then it will just continue on the process in order to be able to uh, set up all the required uh, latest update and patches uh, for the uh, Windows uh, server that we are building. And it does another round right, of uh, updates after the second round in an order that is um, needed in order for all these uh, updates to be installed. Right, so after which this is done, uh, we can see that these are all the things that has been um, updated inside right so ansible does offers a central logging purpose uh, features and all those things which means that you kind of are able to see what has happened right uh, from from the uh, controller perspective and the jobs everything will be recorded uh, within the system right? so then the last things that we are trying to do right it's we kind of retrieve the uuid so that we know uh, which vm we are trying to uh, perform an action on. We have other VMs inside here, like the JBoss uh, EAP server that's running. And you can see that upgrade installation of the uh, VMware tools in, at this point in time is taking place, right? Um, and then it also is able to do a reboot um, after that to make sure that all the new changes are taken into effect and and that uh, and then we can move on to other tasks uh, after that, right? So let's just wait for a while. So as what we were saying, we can actually add more things here. Your monitoring agent, your storage agents, your antivirus, if you want, it can all be uh, put as part of this task, right? Over here, I'm just doing a simple VMware tools update. And the last piece is really to do a shutdown of the VM and then convert it into a uh, VMware template so that you can actually use it uh, next time, right? So then this becomes your golden image. You can see over here that now it's already um, being changed as a template, right? So then over here, you can see that this is the new uh, template that has been uh, created by this process uh, itself. Um, now we have a new December, 2021, as well as the old November 2021 um, template that uh, that we have, right? So of course we want to take care of the whole process itself. Um, the last remaining piece really is around how we can um, also go back to the Git repo and make sure that we, you know, clean up some of those things. So you can see everything has been done over here. It's all good. The whole workflow is successful, right? Um, Things are working from a end-to-end -end perspective. Going back to GitLab, right? So what do we do? Right. So we can see that this integration. It sees that the pipeline has been completed, right? So 
we say that we will just um you know says that this this holding looks good to me right i mean the whole flow itself works the whole pipeline works we do a merge and uh, we will delete the you know the the branch that we were using um, earlier on and then this becomes our new baseline right for next month right so uh, this this really is uh, what uh, we can actually do you know uh, using git and, and ansible uh, and then um, building the the entire uh, environment uh, rather the uh, golden image itself um, using ansible and the pipeline um, i know this may be different right from how you guys are doing it uh, that this is another possible ways um, if you were to use ansible for this and it, it works as well right so uh, that's what we were trying to show over here um any questions uh, from anyone oh <laughs> what do you guys think about what you just saw does it make sense Or maybe I sh I should ask Ravi. Did, did 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 it help to answer some of your questions that that you had? Uh, since you ask, um, or how was the build tested? Right. So over here we are just um, over here we built the image, and then um, this is actually the base image with all this information. So you can see over here that there's checks within the playbooks that will check on whether or not um, it is at the um, level that we want it to be at for instance the hardening uh, requirements right we didn't actually install applications on it uh, we could actually as part of the whole deployment deploy an application on top and then uh, you know um, test whether the application is running and working properly so th those things are something that's outside but over here we're just focused on whether we can build that uh, image properly uh, from scratch and make sure that all the hardening requirements is fully patched and updated. Um, those things are what we were looking at and we get all the agents and um, you know VMware tools and all those things installed. So that was more of what this was trying to achieve. Um, and anything that is on top, which is the application itself, those falls under the application CICD pipeline that uh, will come in. And from that perspective, Ansible is mostly just more for a continuous deployment and delivery uh, portion, right? So that will be how we see this thing. Okay. Right. I mean, um that that was mostly the demo that I wanted to show and just doesn't show whether there's other questions uh, that we have. Yeah. Right, then the other thing is that uh, we will be, of course, going to talk about the newer things, uh, not in this session, right? Uh, we're planning to talk about the new releases uh, for the Ansible platform 2.2, um, perhaps in the next uh, coming um, meetup, right? So 2.2 has just been released um, not too long ago, um, a few weeks back, right? So it actually has uh, some of new features like what we see over here right um i think perhaps this is something that is um worth noting right the services catalog can now be uh, built on prem it used to be just uh as a software as a service uh, kind of uh, features so we took the feedbacks right from customers and uh, we decided to move this uh, on prem so that's something that um, can be used uh, in the future right so we, we will kind of want to look at some of these new features, uh, perhaps in the coming meetup, uh, and just to walk through some of these things that is available in the uh, new release uh, itself. So prior to this, I think we were talking a bit about, you know, the AAP2, AAP2.1, uh, for instance, right? Uh, and um, I think uh, Vinov also mentioned some of the automation mesh um, features uh, previously. So that, that can be other things that we will be showing. And of course, um, now we get a support on the uh, Red Hat uh, Linux uh, 9, right? So those are just some of the new features that's in the new 2.2 release. Uh, we can talk about it um, in the uh, next uh, session, right? Um, and 2.3 is coming somewhere in November, 
right? So there will be more features and enhancement that's going to come um, in the near future, right? Anything else? Yeah, yeah, you you can. Go ahead, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um. The um. I don't know if you're aware that uh, every server come. Well, because well, this was specific to Windows. Um, and uh, that every Windows server comes with PowerShell four or five. Um. So one of the things. I think testing is something you'd want to do, not just for the, um, as your for integration testing of the components you're installing, like the VMware tools, um, you know, verifying that uh, that uh, when I, I'm a big fan of sort of the third party, um, um, and I, I'm sort of compliance thing where. Um, there's something outside of the tool itself to verify that what you want, in this case, the Ansible playbooks to do does what it does. Um, so one of the things um, is uh, that every Windows server comes with PowerShell, and a um, and as well as and if it's 2019, I think you're doing this with, it does come with Pester, which you can use to do integration testing at the OS level. Um, so you can like so one of the things you could do is say, like I know that. Um, when you install like VMware tools, you can verify that um, you know the add remove programs that every Windows server comes with. Um, you that's really in the registry. So one of the things you could do is you can verify that uh, the version you install that you know that that registry entry exists to verify that um, um, you know that it's installed. But the other part also is. Um, Goes and then the other part is you can also do the same thing for your security hardening. Um, so you, you um, one of the things I've done is to um, it, or it doesn't have to be PowerShell, but it has other tools like Inspect and so on, which could do something similar. But for hardening, because um, if is to verify that even after it's built, you are always compliant, that the hardening is always compliant be, be, be post, um, you know, post deployment. Um, Mm -hmm. So that you know, that's one of the things you can do as well. Um, so that's one of the things I just wanted to recommend. Um, and, and then one last thing: the reason I brought up the kitchen thing is something you said in your pipeline where, um, if something goes wrong, you still have to tear it tear it down. And kitchen a test kitchen allows you to do that, irregardless of whether you're using Ansible as your deployer or your provisioning provisioning, as well as you you know using the um, and then whatever your testing tool is. Um, so it automates that part of it, so you don't have to create as complicated. But like you said, your requirement is to create one tool to do it all, and so um, I think that you did satisfy that particular requirement. So, right. I mean, definitely. Right. So there. Are, I mean, uh, in fact, I think uh, it's more common to use uh, you know things like Packer, for instance, um, to to build uh, this image for some of the customers. Uh, but we are just mm -hmm. trying to um, see how we can actually do it um, and fulfill the requirements. Uh, and definitely, right, this whole thing around checking registries uh, that can be done uh, by Ansible as well. We are able to pull out the information and scan the um, the VM accordingly uh, based on the uh, requirements that we have set down. Um, so I th I think those are those are good points um, as well. Um, so uh, yeah, and, well. Hmm. Go ahead. And I don't use in a molecule either, right? This is molecule part of not part of Ansible, but it's a a tool for Ansible as well. Molecule, that right? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. But I think that's, that's, that's correct. I think that's uh, but but I think that that's, that's usually if you are trying to look at maintenance, because right now we are just talking about. Uh, I, I think it's part part of the reason why you know some of those things are not discussed is because. Over here, we are really trying to just say that this is how I build an image. But the day two piece, right? Definitely, those things is going to come in. It's just that for this, I'm treating it as a new build every time, because for instance, November I have one, this December I have one, so those things will keep, um, you know, getting bit uh changed. But the molecule piece will be good as well for testing to make sure that uh the the base, uh, requirements are actually there and that it's good for the CI/CD piece uh, when it comes to the Ansible uh role management. Yeah, but one of the things you're doing with the get lab repo 
with the repo with the pipeline and so on is you're 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 versioning your images correct yes okay i mean that's the best part that's the reason why you want to do it whether you're using Haskell or not but in this you have it in a git repo and you can tag your builds mm -hmm. um so if you say update your vmware tools or or you have to or there's a cv you need to you know um you need to remediate or something then yeah you can, oh, right. you say yeah that's the latest version um and then also um inventorying your your um your server inventory so that when um, you you can see which ones have that image and then update the image um when the you know, security updates and so on come along um, and just yep. reusing the playbooks you wrote just to apply those in a GitOps fashion. So. All right. So, so that was kind of the main idea that we were trying to convey. And of of course, this is more like um, you know, our, our approach, and um, we we try to incorporate uh, the GitOps uh, things inside as well. Uh, right. But yeah, I mean, definitely, that's another thing that one of those uh guys that we were talking to pointed out is that uh instead of a web server hosting uh some of these uh configurations and images we could even have you know things like a nessus uh, repo just to hold this host this so that it's actually uh, much better so i think that there's definitely room for improvements um when, when it comes to um, doing some of these uh things that uh, I, I just showed it was more of us trying to showcase that if you combine git and you combined um workflows and um, let's say the Ansible native uh, integration of GitLab. Uh, those are some of the stuff that uh, we could achieve um, with this. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, but but thanks a lot for, for the comments. I think it really helped. Um, I mean, you know, we recorded this, so we're gonna post this, right? Whoever is listening to this, uh, I think we'll be able to benefit from the things that you just uh, told us. Uh, I think it's good discussions okay. as well. Okay, great. Thanks. Glad I could help. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for the question myself. Right. Yeah, I, I think it was good. I mean, we, we we showed this uh concept to some of our customers as well. So there was there will always be some you know tweaks uh, along the way on how we can further improve this. Some of them sees, you know, for instance, a workflow that we have, it can be used for a brownfield kind of setup because over here we're talking about let's say you're building a new uh, virtual machine, right? But honestly speaking, if you were to just uh look at uh, this pipe um, or rather this flow itself that we have uh, perhaps things like this right the uh, updating of the um, servers and hardening the drift that you were talking about those things can be regularly applied as well on the brownfield uh, vms that's already running within the environment and that's when molecules and all the other uh, tools will then be able to come in because we probably will want to make sure that it's not just a base OS, right? But things like the applications continue to run uh, the way that it should be, even after updating, and that everything is in good conditions. So those are things that we were talking about, like splitting this thing for Brownfield or just taking part of the um, flow itself uh, so that it works for Brownfield. And we don't have to go and recreate a new set of uh, playbooks, for instance, right? So. If all these things are roles, then we could select the roles that we want and, and just uh, use them accordingly. Yep. Great stuff. Um, yep. Any other comments <laughs> from anyone? Yeah, I think Anthony, great stuff, right? I think uh, we showed quite a lot today of the for the image. Um, anybody else have any other questions, comments, or um, anything related to this or any other things on Ansible? All right, feel free to ask. Yeah, I think if you go to the last slide, the mm -hmm. one with the 2.2. Yeah, so I think Anthony mentioned, right, um, Ansible, AP um, 2.2 has been released. And um, that is where I think the new features like topology viewer and the self-hosted on-premise offering for service catalog um, has been released. And it's also supported on uh, RHEL 9, right? Um, so for the next few meetups, do look forward to hearing more about these features. And um, 
if there's no other questions, then I think today we can give you guys back uh, your time. Yeah. Actually, I can get, I have one more question. Sure, um, go ahead. It's unanswerable, but it's not necessarily about what you talked about. Is um, answerable? Do you know if um, um, uh, if um, Red Hat's pursuing um, any type of for the collections? Um, are they pursuing anything in terms of um, secure um, bill materials? As in, um, instead of vendor, right? Be because right now we are working with different uh, third party to come up with the certification for collections. And definitely, if you have something in mind, uh, we, we can discuss. No, I just want to know if there's something coming or if that, or there's, if it's already out or where it's, where it is at the moment, because um, hmm. securing, securing um, third party modules, whether it's, you know, Python or you know, one of the programming language, you know, type libraries. Uh, but I'm also seeing things like um, uh, uh, other things that are not necessarily language specific, but they're, you know, things like um, NuGet packages or, um, um, you know, the, so, so um, and Ansible, I think, um, is, a, is Python. So that part's easy enough because PIP is already doing that, the PIP um, depot. Uh, is doing that, but it's the third party collections that are not necessarily not a tool specific, but, you know, language specific, you know, um, I'm wondering if that has to be covered as well. Um, right. Is that what I... that? <laughs> Go sorry. Go ahead. Um, and I'm looking at your slide just now. I just, re I just saw it. Sorry, I missed it before. That second bullet after new in is that what that new chain of custody features for Ansible content is? Or is that something else? Right. So let me just uh, just go and find that slide deck for you. Right. So just one second. Yeah. So one, I mean, one of the things it would do, the reason why it's important to me is uh, taking, for example, the build you just did. If you put, if someone modify, let's say you have a collection that does the hardening, of um you know of the windows server then is some third part you know um um black hacker tries to change that to do something like maybe disable something you know or um remove a particular security thing then that becomes a problem um you know right. and uh, you know so that's one of the things that i think i would be looking at uh, i'm looking at is to say yeah what does that uh, oh yeah that's exactly what it is Yep, it is what it is. Uh, over here itself, we are really looking at uh, how we can um, ensure that all the collections itself is dig digitally signed, right? So this is exactly right. the point that you are talking about, which is why uh, yep. we think it's important. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those those are things that, uh, I mean, you rightfully pointed out. It's important that uh, the integrity of the source that you're using is really what it is. Uh, claiming to right. be. Okay, thanks. That answered my question. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, we will definitely be going uh, deeper into this uh, because today we kind of set aside the time just to share the golden image uh, pipeline. Uh, if not, we will have gone into AAP 2.2 um, release and the highlights. Yeah, hopefully, the next few sessions we will go through some of these features. Um, so, new stuff to go through. Uh, before the next release of 2.3. I think that will be around Ansible Fest, uh, which is around November, October, November. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think guys look out for the next few sessions. Yep. Hey, thanks a lot for, um, you know, um, especially Ravi, right, for <laughs> raising all the good questions. Anyone yep. else have any other comments or questions? Okay, if not, I think um, we can end this session today. Thank you guys for taking your time to join us. And I uh, look forward to see you guys on the next one. All right, take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you.